morning, everyone. My name is Walter P. White, and I am here to teach you some fucking shit. Um, so this is the inaugural session of Drunk CEs, and there was a big issue when we were reporting the podcast about 30 minutes ago about whether I was going to be too not um, if I was going to be too sober to fucking do this. And at this point, that is good. I'm fucking drunk. So let's teach you some motherfuckers some cardiology. Okay, so um, I would like to just say that we are not endorsed by by EMS Gems World or any of those fucking websites. And you are going to really gain nothing from this tonight. But it doesn't fucking matter. If you're coming to level zero t- for CEs, you've pretty much fucked your life up already at this point. So let's talk about some fucking heart stuff. It's almost St. Valentine's Day. And so let's start by talking about the people out there tonight who don't have a significant other who will love them. And we will talk about broken heart syndrome. Also known as Takasubo cardiomyopathy. Oh. Can you guys see me? Oh, yes. Oh, we can see you. All right, dope. I can't see you because I have a PowerPoint up. Because I don't know the shit off the top of my head. And I would like to say that I have been I have been told that I am now the EMS coordinator for level zero, and I'm fucking stupid. That was a Really bad idea, <laughs> but I kind of think that was the point in general. Okay. Oh, that hurt. Oh, okay. So, Takasubo. So, Takasubo cardiomyopathy. Takasubo cardiomyopathy or broken heart syndrome is when the heart muscle becomes suddenly stunned or weakened. It mostly occurs following severe or emotional or physical stress. The condition is temporary. and Most people can recover within two months. However, ta- Takasubo cardiomyopathy can lead to sudden cardiac arrest. The word Takasubo is based off the Japanese term Takotsubo pot which is a Japanese fishing pot used to capture octopus. In Takasubo cardiomyopathy, the left ventricle becomes enlarged and becomes a similar shape to the octopus trap. And this picture I have is the picture of the heart when it becomes the Takasubo cardiomyopathy. And I don't think anyone could see this because we're a podcast, right? Correct. Okay, well, I'll move on to the next slide. It occurs predominantly in (laughs) postmenopausal women soon after exposure to sudden, unexpected emotional or physical stress. So I would like to share a story about Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. I had a patient. um, I had a medic about 10 years ago who ran a call for a woman who is about 45 years old and it came in as a STEMI and it was chest pain and it was elevation and stuff in the 12 lead. And so the medic that I was working with ran the 12 lead and there's elevation. And uh, so he started transporting and treated like a normal STEMI and about five minutes in transport and she went into V-fib and he shocked her one time, and she came back to consciousness. And then, um, and then she coded again, and she went to V-fib as well. And he shocked her again, and she came back to ANO times four. And she said, "What happened?" And he went, "Dude, you went into fucking V-fib, and I shocked you, and you're back now." <laughs> But the moral of this story is that she went to V-fib 
And he transported Code 3 to the closest cath lab facility. And when they got there and they put her in the cath lab and they put the thing into her femoral and it showed that there was no damage to the heart and there was nothing to actually cath. And later it came out that her father had died and her sister had died and she lost her job all within one week of each other. And what she had was not a necessarily an actual STEMI, but Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. So she technically died of a broken heart twice. And she was shocked and she lived. <laughs> and so... <laughs> and so she walked out of the ER about a week later. And so that brings us back to our point, which is that a curse predominantly in postmenopausal women. She was 45. I can't confirm that she was postmenopausal, but she was definitely at the age where she was close to not having her periods anymore. But many cases that demonstrated acute, severe, reversible left ventricular dysfunction that cannot be explained by coronary ischemia, aortic valvular lesions, or myocarditis. So basically, you will have cardiac events and they'll be like, what the fuck? We don't know actually what's going on, but there's some fucked up shit going on in your life right now. And we're thinking Takatsubo. And your, your left ventricle looks like an octopus pot, so that's what we're calling it. So tachycardia cardiomyopathies, there's high levels of catecholamines which are released during stressful situations, which is sympathetic activity. And remember, just remember the mnemonic that if you're sympathetic to your plight, sympathetic fight or flight. Remember that be, be, between that and the parasympathetic, which is feed or breed. Catecholamines have a negative effect on the heart, causing damage to the myocardium. So if you have a a, a shit ton of catecholamines that can actually have a negative effect to the heart. And this is also why we should never walk STEMI patients and why we should be liberal with lip, why we should, why we should be liberal with giving pain medication because we're trying to avoid releasing catecholamines. Most common is epinephrine and norepinephrine. So, oh fuck, I dropped my mic. <laughs> oh, hold on. I have a. I have a. Oh fuck, I, I broke this completely. <laughs> I'm gonna have to hold this. <laughs> I'm not doing this for theatrics. My, my mic. Oh, fuck. My box fell. <sighs> I have a pot filter and a mic stand, and they both broke the exact same. Two turntables and a microphone? I don't know what that means. <laughs> this is... The catecholamines have a negative effect on the heart, which causes damage to the myocardium. <laughs> what we need to remember, this is a good reason why we don't walk our STEMI patients. Because walking them can actually increase the catecholamines, which can increase the myocardial damage. So when you have a patient with chest pain, you should... Make sure to, to lift them to the gurney. Don't have them walk. And when we talk about fentanyl and morphine, morphine was initially given because it was thought to decrease the preload and the afterload. But we pretty much now know now that that's fucking bullshit. But we're still giving it for pain relief because we don't want the catecholamine release. My mic is fucked. 
You can probably skip the pop filter. I don't give a fuck, man. I have a pop filter. You bought it for me. Thank you, Meat Bolus. I'm going to use the things that you gave me. I fucking dropped it. <laughs> All right, fuck the pop filter. I have my glasses back on because I'm fucking blind. Catecholamines are bad. <laughs> we don't want them. Don't, don't want the patients. It's going to cause Epi and Nor Epi to fucking fill. And we don't want that. The more stress you have on the patient, the worst, the worst things that are going to happen to them. Next slide. <laughs> presentation. You're going to have EKG changes and presentation similar to acute coronary syndrome, which is going to include chest pain, syncope, arrhythmias, and shortness of breath. So pretty much it's going to be your standard STEMI, except they're going to be a sad STEMI instead of a regular STEMI. <laughs> they're going to be a reduced ejection fraction, just reduced, reduced, reduced ejection <laughs> fraction, just like Nicholas. <laughs> and increased cardiac enzymes. When we talk about cardiac enzymes, the thing that we talk about is troponins because we're paramedics and we don't know anything else other than troponins. And then there's going to be an absence of angiographic evidence of obstructive coronary artery disease or acute plaque rupture. I need to fix my pop filter. <laughs> hey, did you guys see where I put it? <laughs> <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> Hold on one second. Uh oh, I dropped my beer. Hello, my name is WBW. There he is. He's back. I'm rejoining after fucking up my microphone. Hey, did you guys hear me talking about Takatsuba cardiomyopathy? We did. We did. Do you remember? Hey, where, <laughs> do you remember where you left off? Uh uh-uh. uh Oh boy. Uh oh. <laughs> did you guys know that catecholamines have a negative effect on the heart, <laughs> which causes damage to the myo? Hold on, I wasn't on this slide. I think I was on the last one. <laughs> I talked about catecholamines for like three slides. Um, do I have my I don't have my pop filter up that's alright you're good alright dope okay catecholamines high levels of catecholamines are released during stressful situations this is a sympathetic activity catecholamines have a negative effect on the heart causing damage <laughs> to the myocardium <laughs> This is why we should never walk STEMI patients. So if you have a STEMI patient, fucking pick up their ass and put them on the gurney. Don't walk them. Y'all understand? Because walking them increases the amount of catecholamines that they're producing. And it fucks them up. Okay? I'm not trying to swear right now. I have a... I have slides in front of me. Stand by. Oh, no, I drank so much. <laughs> um, if your wife didn't hate us before, she's going to fucking hate us. <laughs> she hates you both so much. <laughs> She told me that the podcasts need to be shorter and we're making it so much longer. <laughs> this is also why we should never walk semi patients. It should be liberal with giving pain medication because it avoids releasing catecholamines. Slide number seven. 
I have 32 slides. I'm seven thirty-twoths of the way through. <laughs> the presentation of Takatsubo cardiomyopathy. Um, it's going to be EKG changes in presentation similar to acute coronary syndrome. So that's going to be chest pain. Fucking obviously, you dumb cunt. <laughs> Syncope, arrhythmias, and SOB. Reduced ejection fraction. Meat bolus, you might have Takasubo myopathy. <laughs> it increases your cardiac enzymes. I gorilla glued my mic stand back together and I broke it. <laughs> and then you're going to have an absence of angiographic evidence of dist of obstructive coronary artery disease coronary artery coronary artery disease or acute plaque rupture plaque rupture calf so basically your 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 calf is will be clean calf lab good on takatsubo cardiomyopathy <laughs> Cath lab could patient bad. Treatment for pre-hospital providers will be exactly the same as any other ACS patient. So, so Mona, morphine, oxygen, when appropriate, and remember that we should not be giving oxygen just to any other fucking patient. We're not volunteer firefighters. We give oxygen only when it's titrated to effect. And then nitroglycerin and aspirin. And we give aspirin because it inhibits polyaggregation aggregation by blocking the formation of substance thromboxanate 2, therefore also increasing bleeding time. Rapid transport. <laughs> My next slide has a, has a picture from a Bee Gees album, and it says, how can you mend a broken heart? <laughs> and I was going to sing the Bee Gees, but I don't actually know that song very well. <laughs> treatment for Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is similar to treatment for heart failure patients. So, BGs, if you want to know how can you mend a broken heart, the answer is ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, and diuretics. Next slide. I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Hey, am I doing okay so far? Dude, you're fucking killing it. Okay, I'll be right back. I've, been, I've peed like 20 times in 30, 20, 20 minutes. I'm going to okay, do the I same because I got old man bladder. Stand by. I need to fix my mic. This has been fucking amazing so far. Dude, like, it's not that I doubted it was going to go well. It's just that it's going even better than I expected. <laughs> I'm just so impressed that he's able to keep it together, be in that drum. I, I, I couldn't fucking do it. Nope. <laughs> oh. Hey. We're back. Okay. Um, did we talk about attack of super macaromyopathy? <laughs> we did. <laughs> I think we're on slide eight, maybe. Um, so there was a problem coming forward. I thought I was not going to be drunk enough. <laughs> <laughs> I solved it. <laughs> you solved for X. I don't remember what number I was on. I think seven or eight slide wise. No, I was definitely past nine because nine was the Bee Gees. Oh, okay. Know your eyes in the morning sun. I feel you touch me in the pouring rain. <laughs> okay, so number 10 or 11. Hold on, I think I might be on 10. <clears throat> um, 
Is the admin still here, or did he leave? It looks like he got boxed. He might have caught a call. I'm really drunk. <laughs> I drank two bottles of wine and a full bottle of James. <laughs> it cost me so much to do drunk CEs, dude. You better make sure you're recording. It's recording. Okay. So next, you are going to go on STEMI Mimics. And it's important to know about STEMI Mimics in general because STEMI Mimics. If we have a call that we think is a STEMI, it might be a fucking mimic, bro. A good rule when interpreting 12 leads is that any presence of SD elevation is myocardial injury until proven otherwise. So I'm going to tell you some motherfucking shit tonight. But you keep in mind that is a STEMI until proven otherwise. Okay? So there are some agencies that talk about two millimeters of elevation and like the anterior leads. And we're going to talk about one millimeter of elevation. So one millimeter of elevation or more of elevation and two or more of contiguous leads. That's what we're talking about. So one millimeter or more of elevation and two or more of contiguous leads. There are more, there are other conditions that may lead to a patient having elevation that are not semis, which is the point of this fucking interview. Cause we're going to talk about STEMI mimics. I don't know how to make it go to the next slide. Benign early repolarization. So what's what's wonky as fuck is that when I was looking this up the other night, it's said that it's now just called early repolarization instead of benign early repolarization. But fuck that. I'm a boomer medic, and so I'm just going to call it benign early repolarization because that's how I was taught. It's characterized as global ST elevation, which means that ST elevation across the entire 12 lead, generally with no evidence of any cardiac disease. Huh. There's also going to be slurring. Slurring or notching on the downstroke of a Dominant R wave, which is common. In BER, the ST elevation is described as concave as opposed to elevation in a STEMI, which generally has a convex morphology. So basically what we're looking at is it's going to be a smiley face. So it's going to be a happy smile. And all you do have to do is add the happy eyes to it to make it a happy smiley face for BER. Here's a picture of BER, which y'all motherfuckers can't see because we don't have fucking video in our podcast. But I assure you that I have it. Oh, I skipped forward. Stand by. Can you guys still hear me? Oh, yeah. Dope. Do you remember me talking about the Bee Gees? Mm-hmm. Am I obnoxious? <laughs> I think you might be noxious, but I don't think you're obnoxious. Okay. A left bundle branch block. Now, if y'all motherfuckers are looking at a left bundle and be like, that's a fucking STEMI, y'all are fucking advanced EMT because you're fucking stupid. <laughs> But a left bundle branch block is characterized by a curious, curious complex that's greater than 120 milliseconds or 0.12, depending on what a fucking cardiology book you have. And it's a dominant Q. <clears throat> it's a dominant Q. 
or predominant S in leads V1 through V3, and a broad dominant R wave in the lateral leads. So basically, you're going to have one lead that's like this and the other lead that's like this. And it's generally pre-existing and benign in nature. So y'all motherfuckers have hypertension? Guess what? You're going to have a left bundle branch. Y'all unhealthy motherfuckers. Um, my pair is... My chair is pink. <laughs> it's really weird. I can't see you. Hey, I will. I will bring this out to the audience because we do have an audience today. Do y'all know about Scarbosa criteria? Do you want to tell me about Scarbosa cars? Scarbosa criteria, or are you so fucking stupid that I need to do it myself? But I will ask you first. No, you stupid motherfuckers. That's why your admin's on level zero, bitch. Oh, fuck. This is a horrible idea. Why the fuck did I come up with this? I even fucking said I would do this first. Uh, uh, I drank so much, so much sugary wine. Scarbosa criteria. All right, I'm going to get serious for a minute here, okay? Scarbosa criteria. Scarbosa criteria. Because left bundle branches, left bundle branch blocks in general have ST elevation. The Scarbosa is a way to figure out whether the ST elevation is this a normal left bundle branch bullshit or it's an actual fucking stubby bullshit. Stemmy. A left bundle. A left bundle. What are we talking about? Scarbosa. Scarbosa, bitch. Scarbosa criteria. If we're looking con concordant ST elevation. Greater than one millimeter in. One millimeter and leads with a positive QRS complex. That's the score five. So the general idea is that in the left funnel branch, I'm putting on my glasses because I'm feeling smart as fuck right now, okay? Concordant. If we're talking about concordant. We're talking about our motherfucking J point, okay? So if we have an upward deflecting QRS complex with the J point that is also above the isoelectric line that is concordant. <laughs> it's a STEMI. Have I talked about left bundle branch box? Concordant ST depression in V1 through V. Well, hold on. Concordant ST elevation greater than one millimeter and leads with a positive QRS complex is a score of five. If we have a score of five, it's a STEMI. Okay. If it's, we have concordant. ST depression in V1 through V3 is a score of three. <laughs> Excessively discordant ST elevation greater than five millimeters is a score of two. 
a score of three or greater has a great suspicion of being a myocardial infarction. So fuck your excessively discordant ST elevation. It don't really fucking matter. We're looking for concordant ST depression and concordant ST elevation greater than one millimeter. There have been changes to scar both the criteria. Basically, if it's concordant, we fucking care. Discordant, we don't fucking care, okay? If you don't know what a left bundle branch block is, fucking Google it. Y'all have smartphones. It's 2021. I lost my slides. Slide 17. Hyperkalemia. We are talking about ST M mimics, semi mimics, STEMI mimics, hyperkalemia, hyperkalemia, which is also known as elevated potassium. So if you have a normal potassium and it's high, it's elevated, leads to ECG changes that can often mimic, mimic a STEMI. Hyperkalemia ST elevation is most commonly seen in leads V1 and V2. But can it be occasionally seen in other leads? How am I doing? Killing it still. <laughs> Slide 17. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers ain't getting the pictures because we're a podcast on Spotify. <laughs> this is the fucking shit show, man. <laughs> I drank two bottles of wine and a bottle of Jameson, and I'm fat. <laughs> but it's still making me drunk. Hyperkalemia. ECG, it's fucking bullshit. And sometimes I call it ECG, and sometimes I call it EKG. And it's kind of a day of the week type thing, but whether I fucking like it one way or the other, we're not. But in this slide, I put ECG changes, include the following, usually in this order peaked T waves, shortening of the QT interval. Shortening of the PR interval, flattening of the P waves, widening of the QRS complex, and then ventricular dysrhythmias and death. Motherfucker, you're gonna go into VFM and then you're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> We're teaching motherfuckers. <laughs> Left ventricular hypertrophy. <laughs> Y'all got hypertension. Y'all got LVH. <laughs> it's a thickening of the wall of the left ventricle. <laughs> Your left ventricle is so thick. <laughs> It's almost all. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got hypertension. Oh no. For real, man. I'd like to point out that left ventricular ventricle is thick stickers are available <laughs> on the web store for $1.99. Can I have some free stickers because I made this? <laughs> All proceeds from those sticker sales will go to Walt's divorce lawyer. She's so mad. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want me to get drunk. I told me not to drink and I just drank more. I drank so much and it's her wine bottles. She didn't want me to drink them. Oh. LVH, left <laughs> ventricular hypertrophy. <laughs> so 
So basically, it's the thickening of the wall of the left ventricle. It's almost always high blood pressure. The most common cause is hypertension. We're talking about the criteria. It's just, oh. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking yak. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Oh, no. I drank a liter of sweet wine and Jameson. I drank a whole bottle of Jameson and two bottles of sweet wine. The fuck is wrong with me? I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> and instead, I'm like, I'm going to do level zero bullshit. <laughs> With the admin, and he fucking left already. He got a post move. He had to go. Fuck the admin. <laughs> bah! The Sokolo Lion criteria is most widely used to diagnose left ventricular hypertrophy. So basically, we're looking at the amplitude of the S wave in V1 plus. Plus, oh, I did I tell you guys I broke my mic? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so low lie, lion criteria. The amplitude of the S wave in V1 plus the R wave in V5 or V6 is greater than 35 millimeters. I don't know. I need to buy a boom mic. <laughs> Elevation may occur and leads V1 through V3 due to electrical remodeling secondary to hypertrophy. <sighs> Have I done STEMI mimics? <laughs> I have so many pictures, but our podcast isn't video. We can edit this with video. Oh, dude, we should do that. Send me the slides. I have so many slides. I need to send it to my boss, too. I don't know what number I was on. Oh. Did I do hyperkalemia? Why is page seven my fucking first slide? Dude, I did some fucking good slides on this shit, man. Oh, hold on. I got all the way to WPW, but I'm not going to do that because my name is WPW. Isn't that exactly why you want to do it? I don't know. <laughs> oh. Did I do Scar... I did the Car... Scarbosa. Hyperkalemia. I keep going back to the beginning. Pericarditis. I haven't done that yet. But there's other things. Huh? Have I done left? I've done, okay, I've done left funnel branch because I did Scarbosa. And then I did LVH. Hey, am I doing okay? You are doing absolutely perfect. Help! LVH. Hey, I'm just gonna let you know that if you have fucking LVH, take your license, probably you fucking dumb cunt. That's pretty much all it is. It's fucking take the blood pressure stuff. You're just undiagnosed LV fucking hypertension. Brew goddess syndrome. Um, we are doing STEMI mimics. Brugada syndrome, which is first described and reported in Thailand, which means that it's sometimes called Thailand syndrome. Brugada syndrome. It's first described and reported in Thailand. Oh. 
the wine is so sweet. Thought to be the cause of death in about four to five percent of sudden death cases, especially in males. Characterized by an indistinct R wave where the ST segment has a gradual dawn, gradual downslope causing elevation. <sighs> there are two types of brugada, neither one of which you all will never fucking see, but I'm gonna fucking tell you about it anyway because I'm fucking. CES coordinator of level zero. Bro got him. Top one. ST elevation of V1 to V3 with a cove morphology. Frequently identified as a right bundle branch block. Type two. Called a saddleback morphology with greater than two millimeters ST elevation. Am I doing okay, guys? Yep. I'm great. Dope. <sighs> Fuck. Have I really been doing this for 32 minutes? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I need to finish this up. This is really long. This is content, motherfuckers. <laughs> Pericarditis. Which is defined as global diffuse ST elevation. These patients will be sick, cold, flu like symptoms, fever, pericarditis, is swelling, and irritation of the thin sack like tissue surrounding your heart. Often causes sharp chest pain. Pain is often relieved by leaning forward and exacerbated. That means made worse by lying supine, breathe and don't breathe, or coughing. Here's a 12 lead. Y'all can't see. Osborne waves. Osborne waves or J waves are brief positive deflections at the junction of the QRS complex in the ST segment, most commonly seen in the hypothermia but may also be seen in hypercalcemia and brain injury, commonly associated with bradycardia. Am I talking fucking ghetto? <laughs> I feel like I'm fucking getting a hood. You might be a little more uh, evangelical. Moving on to Wolf Parkinson White. This isn't a STEMI mimic, but my name is S, so we're talking about it. A condition in which there is an electrical accessory pathway in the heart. Heart sick, what is this called? An accessory pathway? God damn it, what is the name of the accessory pathway? <laughs> you stupid cunt. Bundle of cunt. Bundle of cunt. This is called the bundle of cunt. This problem is congenital, meaning you have it when you were born. WPW is generally not serious, and many people are unaware that they have it. Wolf Parkinson White may lead to SVT and cause the following symptoms. Palpitations. Lightheadedness and dizziness. <laughs> Shortness of breath, chest pain, anxiety, but not anxiety like we think anxiety, but actual anxiety and syncope. Next slide. On an ECG, Wolf, Parkinson, White could be suspected with the following findings. A shortened PR interval of less than 120 milliseconds or 0.12 ms caused by a pre 
excitation. A delta wave. An upstroke and slurring of the QRS complex occurs due to the actual potential of the SA node happening very quickly due to the accessory pathway. Potentially a widened QRS complex. If not defined, uh, it's not defined as a widened QRS complex. A lot of times it's said that it has a widened QRS complex because it got a motherfucking delta wave. But bitch, we know it ain't a real fucking widened QRS complex. It's just a delta wave accessory shit. Can you still hear me? <laughs> We're here. Yes. Here's some pictures. You can't see them. <laughs> Use adenosine with caution. Cardiovert, if hemodynamically unstable, bitch, you really think you can be hemodynamically unstable with WPW? It's going to be about a 0.5% of the population that got the WPW. WPW? W? DPW, WPW, and of that 0.5% of the population, it's going to be fatal, and about 0.3% of the population, so it's going to be super random cardiovascular motherfucking WPW population, but sometimes it's going to happen. But people who are going to cardiovascular the WPW page are going to be listening to this motherfucking podcast. So just fuck it. They're fine. Give them fluids and transport. An ablation may be performed by specialists to cure WPW, but we don't fucking do that because we free hospital. The end. This is the first and the last time we're ever going to get this done. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, so much for listening. I drink so much. I fucking hate this. <laughs> this is the worst thing I've ever done in my fucking life. I would like to give uh, a round of applause to WP for holding it together, being this drunk and still able to fucking give that level of education. Bravo, sir. Here's the thing is I'm not smart at all. <laughs> fucking dumb. I know like eight things in EMS. <laughs> and I don't have much actual education capabilities. <laughs> The sad thing is, I actually learned stuff. <laughs> man, yeah, I did. That nerd. was actually pretty good. Thanks. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you, hard stick. I broke my mic. I don't know how I did it. And I honestly <laughs> don't know. It fucking just broke. But my pop filter is out in the fucking field. <laughs> we'll get you a we'll get you a boom mic and a new pop filter sent out. Thanks, man. I appreciate you, meatball. I think I speak for anyone listening that we appreciate the sacrifice you made tonight to bring us this level of fucking entertainment because this was amazing. Uh, was it okay? It was amazing. It was good. No joke. I'm so fucking drunk right now, man. <laughs> I couldn't. Was it okay? Dude, beyond okay. It was great. Ha <laughs> ha! It's like when I fucked my wife for the first time and I thought it was going to be mediocre and it was just above average. <laughs> Where's the admin? I miss him so much. I want to leave you two motherfuckers and go join him. I'm glad we recorded this on Sunday because this is going to take days to edit. I have commitments to level zero. <laughs> Meets, wrap it up. Holy shit, what a whirlwind <laughs> fucking podcast that was. Hello, I am level zero. Wolf Parkinson White, wait, Walter P. White, and y'all listen to the motherfucking first. <laughs> first! Last. Y'all listen to the first motherfucking drunk CE, and we appreciate you. I broke my mic <laughs> and submit this to fucking emsce.com and nrent.com and we're going to fucking deal with the backlash at a later time. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
<laughs> this has been Drunk CEs. Portions of this program were made possible by generous donations from Blue Chew, Jameson, The Food and Stuff, DeVita Dialysis, and Level Zero. <laughs>